good afternoon and welcome to our showcase and awards ceremony. We had an absolutely awesome class this week. Nicole and I had such a good time with your kids. They're so enthusiastic and, and bright and eager. And we just had a lovely, lovely time this week working with all these great kids. They uh, have been such fun and so, so good at, at what they're doing. And I can't wait for you to see the speeches they're about to present for you. Nicole, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yeah, I had such a great time with your kids this week. Uh, they are, like Terry said, super enthusiastic and they're super willing to learn and just get better and better, which was really great for us because it just allowed for them to grow and for us to keep teaching them that new things. And also this was just a hilarious group. They were all so much fun. So I had a great time this week and I can't wait for you to see what they have been working on. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the survey. The survey is really important to us. This is like our report card. This is where you tell us some things that we uh, maybe could work on and improve and make even better for uh, next summer. And also it's a chance for you to hopefully give us a few compliments and let us know some things we've done well. Everybody likes to hear some good things too. I'm going to tell you that every single survey response is read. I know this for a fact because uh, I get a lot of feedback from surveys that help me become a better instructor, better camp director and find ways to make things uh, better. Capital debate, well, as I said, they read every one of these surveys from both the students and from parents and from staff members because they want to have the best possible camp experience for everybody involved. And I personally have seen changes that have been made over the years based on suggestions that were made in these surveys. So I do want you to know they take them very seriously. The student survey is, is the link at the bottom of the screen. The parent survey is the link at the top of the screen. And you'll also be sent a reminder email about this. So you don't need to worry about writing this down right now. But please take you know, a few minutes to fill that out and let us know how we're doing. Thank you so much for that. Some of these students will be going on to 201 next week. And uh, that's the next uh, portion of, of this class where they take the speech that they've written. And then they're going to use that as the case for a debate round that they're going to have at the end of the week for their showcase. They're gonna learn about um, how to answer another person's argument, uh, questioning skills, and other uh, debate skills to get them started on the road to debate. And let me tell you, as, as actively involved as these kids have been, I can't wait to see what they can do with 201. If your student isn't signed up for 201 next week, it's not too late. Uh, we have a coupon code next class 2020 and for $50 off that camp. Now we're not offering, I think, most of these classes next week, but we do have these programs available. Uh, so if in the future you want to take some of these, we have a legal communication class, a business communication class, interpersonal communication, STEM communication, and then after 201 comes 301, 401. And what they could sign up for in the fall is the club league. And I think more details on that are on the next slide. We've got our, our contact information there, which will be back up in just a minute. So the club leagues a chance for them to debate other kids from around the country. It's really a lot of fun. They meet online once a week with their teacher and they prepare to debate other kids from um, other classes that, that are, are learning about the debate topic. I, I'm not quite sure with that one. Okay. Um, so they practice with their teacher one night a week, uh, Tuesday night or when, I'm really not quite sure with that slide. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Um, and then they have, uh, there's office hours during the weekend where uh, students can uh, talk one-on-one -on -one with the coach with uh, specific questions they might have. 
and uh, we'll have online resources available. And um, it'll be during, there'll be four sessions of the club league with about two months each. And there'll be a, a debate tournament, usually the third Saturday of the month. If you're interested in having your student join that, that would, uh, you could save $100 if you sign up uh, today. Okay. And the contact information for Capital Debate is team at capitaldebate.com. The phone number is 1-800-450-5012. And we always like to hear from our students and our, our parents. So our first certificate is for Addie. Addie is quiet but mighty. She doesn't speak up often because we're a very talkative class and sometimes it's a little hard for her to get a word in edgewise. But uh, when she does speak up, she has something really, really valuable to say. Arca Pravo. Arca Pravo is our quirky little kid who has the, the most unique and wonderful sense of humor. He makes me laugh every day. And uh, he has worked very hard on his speech. And it's a really interesting topic on uh, solar energy. We can't wait to see that. Nico. Nico's the man. Nico um, has a plan for everything. He's always thinking and organizing. He's, he's just a born leader. And um, he had a great time leading his group in developing the, uh, I, I think it was the 3D food printer that, they, that that group made. It was Nico's idea and he led them through that. He also has some very strong opinions about playing mafia. <laughs> we all got to listen to. Uh, and he is a wonderful speaker. You're really gonna enjoy his speech. Shireen is a delightful young lady who is kind of laid back about what she has to say, but she has a lot of things to say and with a lot of enthusiasm, but, but without like in your face about it. She, she has a, a quiet way of, of really expressing herself and uh, she's going to give you a terrific speech as well. Jamin. You know, when we first started class, I thought Jamin was going to be one of those quiet types who were going to have a really hard time getting to talk, but I was wrong. Jamin likes to talk. It's just this class, the whole class likes to talk. Jamin, uh, uh, we had a really interesting discussion right before we started this uh, session. We were all talking about the Nintendo Switch and playing games, and he's uh, very knowledgeable about a great many things. It was really interesting to hear him talk about that. Uh, and Jamin is going to be speaking for you on uh, whether or not the government should uh, regulate social media companies. Will be very interesting. Beatrice. Beatrice is small but mighty. When I think of Beatrice, I think of a firecracker. She is a bundle of energy and has the most wonderful smile and uh, is always fun to listen to. And she's going to give a terrific speech as well. She's worked very hard on it. Maddie is a sweetheart. She is so supportive. She was always giving encouraging comments to every student, no matter what we're doing. We could be playing scribble. Oh, that was a really good drawing. Or we could be giving a presentation. Oh, that was a really good idea. Or whatever it is we're doing. Uh, Maddie is the number one supporter of everybody in the group, and she is so kind and supportive that it's wonderful to have her in the group. And that is everyone. All right. So we're going to begin our presentations. I am so proud of these kids. They've worked super hard on these speeches. They have uh, written and revised and revised again and taken every suggestion Nicole and I gave them and and worked to make uh, just wonderful, wonderful speeches. We worked very hard on presentation and I think you're going to see the results of all that hard work. I can't wait for you to see it. We're going to begin with Nico. Nico is going to be talking about government regulation of social media.
We all use social media one way or another. It's a part of our everyday lives. But what if your identity was stolen? Or what if someone made a comment on Facebook that incriminated you? We can change these kind of things. That is why the US government should regulate social media companies. These companies either have too much power, have widespread misinformation, or they're based in different countries. The first reason why we should regulate social media companies is that they have too much power. For example, ProPublica, an independent newsroom, had a political ad tracker that Facebook accepted the results from for over a year. According to the Washington Post, one day they shut it down because their users were getting mad at their content being taken down. Another example is that Google controls 80% of web searches in the United States. This means that oppositions such as Safari, DuckDuckGo, and Bing have no way, no chance of taking over Google. The final example is that Facebook bought Instagram for $1 billion because Twitter had offered $5 million for Instagram. And Facebook was scared that Twitter would get an advantage over them due to the fact that Instagram and Twitter would work perfectly together. The second reason why we should regulate social media companies is that they have widespread misinformation. For example, TikTok influencers convince people to register for Trump Tulsa rally and not attend. Even if in good vein, this should not be happening. Another example is how Donald Trump Jr. posted a video on YouTube and Facebook about how hydroxychloroquine is a cure for coronavirus, which is not true. And that is what shows that he had such an easy time getting the video posted and there were no regulations on whether it was right or not. The final reason why we should regulate social media companies is that these companies are based in different countries. For example, TikTok is owned by ByteDance. ByteDance is a Chinese company and they can access TikTok users' data. You are a user once you make a video. If ByteDance were asked to hand over the user data, they would willingly do so, according to Newzella. Another example is that WeChat, a popular Chinese messaging company, can access your calls and contacts, meaning they, that they have a lot of your personal information. And the final example is that QQ, a popular Chinese messaging site, complies with the Chinese government's surveillance, meaning they could be tracking you wherever you go. This is a violation of privacy and should not be happening. In the end, social media is a risk to everyday society and should much be much more safe. That is why the US government should regulate social media companies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nico. That was great. Our next speaker today is going to be Arca Pravo. And he will be speaking about solar energy. Hi, my name is Arca Pravo, and I'm going to be telling you a speech about solar energy. One day you're working, and suddenly the lights go out. You laugh to yourself, and you continue your work. The generator can make electricity anyway, so you turn it on. What are you smell something? It isn't fish, it's gas. And you go to a generator. After two minutes, it explodes. You're dead, but your two employees are in the next room and they're seriously injured. Someone calls 911 and the two employees survive. But you're soaring upwards never to see your office again. What you listen to happened on July 13, 2014. One employee was killed and the other two seriously injured. So instead of possibly getting killed, install solar panels. It saves money, increases property value, and it helps the environment. First reason is that it saves money. Revision.com said that an average home with enough solar panels can save up to $44,126 over the course of 25 years instead of paying for utility power. If you make excess power, then send it back to the grid and the electric company will pay you for the excess power that you make. If you're paying taxes, then you will qualify for a federal tax credit. The federal tax credit was issued on 2001 and it's going to expire on 2021, so you better install the solar panels quickly. The second reason is that it increases property value and it sells the property quickly. 
In technical.com, so the house with solar panels sells 20% quicker than a house without solar panels. Nearly 315,000 Americans added solar panels to their house in 2018, representing an annual growth of 8% to the residential sector. So your property will go higher and you can have the same advantage as the people who already have solar panels already, if you install solar panels. In addition to the fact that solar panels don't require much maintenance, they can also lower and eventually eliminate utility bills, increase home value, and allow the homeowner to take advantage by saving tax rebates and credits. CCPD.org says the average U.S. household produces 7.5 tons of CO2 equivalents per year. With solar, you can reduce your carbon emissions by three to four tons per year. Solar systems drive clean, pure energy from the sun. They also emit zero carbon emissions. Overall, the panels are a great investment and they save money. They increase property value and they help the environment. Another accident happened on November 20th, 2011, when propane leaked and some employees died of asphyxiation. So do you want to die? If you do, then you don't have to install solar panels. Thank you. Thank you, Arcapravo. Our next speaker is Maddie. Maddie will be speaking about government regulation of social media. There's an episode of the show called I Love Lucy that I saw in class. It's where Lucy and her friend Ethel go to wrap chocolates on an assembly line. As the chocolates keep coming and going faster and faster, they scramble to keep up. They keep getting farther behind. I remember when Lucy said, I think we're fighting a losing game. This reminded me of where we are with social media in America today. It's a losing game for individuals. This is what the government needs to regulate social media companies because there are privacy problems, much too, too much in misinformation and cyber bullies. The first reason that the government needs to regulate social media companies is privacy protection. The, getting hacked. The thing about getting hacked is people steal your information and they spread it all over the internet. According to hack.com, they change your passwords and they can do whatever they want to your profile. Companies selling your information. Companies use your information to improve their market ca marketing campaign and they boost sales in their products. They also use money they try they use your information to get money to earn money for their product identity theft identity theft is where someone hacks into your account and pretends to be you according to consumer.ftc.gov they spend your money on themselves i don't think you'd want that misinformation conspiracy theories on social media there are many conspiracy theories an example is that the covid vaccine will leave a digital tattoo on your arm Although we don't know that because unfortunately we have not found a vaccine for the coronavirus yet. Rumors. A, a rumor is a story or a doubtful truth. An example of one is that Minnesota doesn't count absentee, absence ballots unless the race is, the outcome of the race is so close that there is a recount. Republican Jason Lewis stated this. Cyberbullying. Cyber bullies come in all shapes and sizes. And according to nudesec.com, anyone with an internet connection or a mobile phone can cyber bully someone else. Somebody, one minute they can, one minute someone can be your friend and the next they can turn on you and attack you on social media. Cyber, cyber bullies can attack, can cyber bully you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so that nowhere, not even your own house feels safe. And with a few clicks, the humiliation can be witnessed by hundreds, even thousands of people online. Kids use different, all types of methods to cyberbully. They might send threatening or taunting messages, or even create a false media page about you. Cyberbullying results in isolation, depression, illness, suicide, anger, and humiliation. The American Association of Suicidology stated that suicide rates among 10 to 14 year olds have 
raised more than 50% over the last three decades because of cyberbullying. In conclusion, the government needs to regulate social media companies because of the privacy problems, the misinformation, and cyberbullying. This has to get fixed, and it will if the government gets a front row seat. Thank you so much, Maddie. Our next speaker will be Shireen. Shireen will be talking about a public ban on cigarette smoking. You start to wonder, whatever happened with your life? Whatever happened to the joyful days you used to have? All of a sudden, everything seems to be coming darker and darker, and something's coming closer and closer. Boom, all of a sudden, you wake up with lots of pain and realize you're on the verge of death. Pain screams all around, and it's time you can't escape the wrath that all started because of smoking. All public smoking should be banned. Smoking hurts your body, the ones around you, and bans on smoking are proven to be effective. What Reason one, it hurts your body. According to a British National Health Service, smoking can increase the risk of a stroke and doubles your risk of getting a heart attack. Smokers have an increased chance of getting stomach and kidney cancer. Note that if you smoke more, you have the greater risk. Smoking causes bad breath and stained teeth. It also increases the risk of lips, tongue, throat, voice box, and gullet cancer. Smoking um, reduces the skin coming, reduces the oxygen coming into your skin. It makes your skin age more quickly and looks, and it makes your skin look gray and dull. Your bones become weak and brittle. Reason two, smoking does not just hurt you, but the ones around you. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, tobacco use can be harmful to everyone, including unborn babies and people who don't even smoke. When parents expose their children to smoking or they let others do, they're sending a message that smoking is okay. Also, according to American Academy of Pediatrics, secondhand smoking contains about 4,000 chemicals and most cause cancer. Because of exposure to secondhand smoking, 3,400 non-smokers die from lung cancer every year, and 22,000 to 69,000 non-smokers die from diseases, heart diseases every year. Reason three, bans on smoking are proven to be effective. According to American College of Cardiology, researchers find that smoking can be reduced uh, well, number of heart attacks can be reduced as much as 26% a year because of bans. Bans might also be able to prevent lung cancer. They could have a stronger effect in reducing heart attacks among women and younger children. A nationwide ban on public smoking could prevent 154,000 heart attacks each year. People inter People working in the entertainment or hospital hospitality industry are likely to have the greatest benefit from the bans. Smoking hurts, in conclusion, smoking hurts you badly and the ones around you. Plus, bans on smoking are proven to be effective. All public, therefore, all public smoking should be banned. Thank you, Shireen. Our next speaker will be Addie. Okay, so like many of us, COVID-19 has impacted our lives very much and has brought a lot of uncertainty to our life. So in just six months, the world has surpassed 20 million cases of coronavirus and nearly 700,000 deaths. If masks were required, and they should be, like in public, certainly this, certainly this, this situation wouldn't be that bad. Everyone should wear a mask in public because a it protects you from getting it, but it also helps other people like not get it and not spread it easily. Easily, and it also decreases the cases and deaths. So for one reason, it protects you and the people around you. According to the Center for Disease Control, wearing a mask not only protects you but it also protects the other people around you. And then 
Um, infectious disease specialist Peter Chin Hong says that when you look in a crowd, you can't tell who has the coronavirus because of like in asymptomatic infections. So this creates more uncertainty and wants to, and you probably would want to wear a mask even more. He also says that compared to wearing a mask, cleaning your iPhone or wiping out your groceries are not as necessary because it says that there's a lot of evidence of transmission through inhaled droplets. The second reason is that it will decrease the amount of reported cases and deaths. A recent study in health affairs says that when masks are mandated in 15 states, the coronavirus rate, growth rate lowers because of the mask, which becomes more apparent over time. Another study looked at coronavirus deaths across 198 countries and said that the governments who are favoring mask wearing have lower death rates. By October 1st, if 95% of the people in public wear a mask, 33,000 deaths could be avoided. As you can see, masks are very vital during this COVID-19 pandemic because A, it protects you from getting it, but it also like, doesn't spread it as much as it is now. It also decreases the cases and deaths. Who knows, if everyone wears a mask in public when social distancing is not possible, we can all go back to our day-to-day -day lives and eventually not wear a mask, which is what we probably don't want. We don't want to wear a mask. Thank you, Addy. Uh, next up, we will have Beatrice. Beatrice will uh, be speaking on the topic of everyone wearing a mask in public. One person died every 80 seconds in America last week. Did you know that COVID-19 has killed almost 165,000 people, not to mention that the number of confirmed cases are around 5.17 million cases. This is why we should wear masks, not only to protect ourselves, but to protect others around us, as well as to protect the economy and as well as to inspire others to wear masks. First, the first reason that we should all wear masks so we can keep each other safe. Wearing a face mask can help stop the spread of the virus, says Dr. Arigano. If a person were to sneeze on your face, a mask could help with that. If you're the one sneezing, put in a barrier between you are putting a barrier between you and that person. You can also unknowingly contaminate somebody. The BBC News reports that six to almost 18% of those infected can carry the virus without symptoms. Researchers at Florida Atlantic University show us how effective masks can be in reducing the number of droplets that are dispersed into the air. Without a mask, droplets can travel up to eight feet, but with a mask, they are only able to travel a foot to three feet. The second reason that we should try to, we should help, we should wear all wear masks is to help the economy. A study at Arizona State found that if 80% of people wore more effective mask, masks, we could reduce the number of deaths in NYC by 17 to 45% over a two-month period. If everybody took their safety and hygiene seriously, we would have flattened the curve and returned back to home faster, said Dr. Arigano. Reason number three that we should all wear a mask is so that we can inspire others to do the same. Some may say, if I'm not high risk, why should I bother wearing a mask? Well, the answer is quite simple. You can still get COVID and you can still have, and your life can still easily be in danger even if you're not high risk. Do not wear a mask if unconscious. Doctors usually say that you have to be able to put on and take off your mask on your own. Also, wearing a mask to sleep is just not a good idea in general. When I was doing my research, I came across this one person. Her name is Patricia Dock. She rarely ever wears a mask in public. She chooses not to listen to doctor recommendations as well. She still goes to grocery stores and malls and other things like this. She only wears a mask to get through the entrance, and then once she's through, she takes off her mask. Once she walks by, some people choose to walk away while others stop and stare. You'd think that since she's high risk, she might want to wear a mask for her own safety, but think again. That's just why we should encourage people like Bruce and Doc to wear a mask. Because personally, I work better when I'm being encouraged, not when I'm being yelled at to do something. All in all, this is why we should wear a mask so we can keep everybody safe, safe as well as help our economy. And maybe finally we can show some people that it's important to wear a mask. All in all, we should all wear masks so we can get back to our normal day-to-day -day life much faster. Thank you so much, Beatrice.
Our final speaker today is Jamin, who will be speaking about government regulation of social media, which, by the way, in case you're wondering why we have several students speaking on that topic, that is our debate topic for next week. All right, Jamin. Imagine you wake up on a sunny morning and you immediately go to Facebook as you normally do every morning. You go to your DMs and you realize they've been flooded by messages from bots saying, click on this link for free $10 or a free gift card to Walmart. You know they're fake, you know they're viruses or scams, but you still know people still fall for them every day. This is just another example of people trying to steal your identity theft on social media. The government should regulate social media. Firstly, a lot of news or information on social media is disinformation. Secondly, all your information could be sold on the internet, which could lead to information mining and identity theft. Thirdly, too many people are being cyberbullied on social media, and this could all be eliminated if the government would choose to regulate social media. Disinformation. Disinformation is false information which is intended to mislead people to influence real-world real applications. Most of the time, the information is spread unknowingly through normal people believing the news article or falling for it and sharing it to their friends. Especially during COVID-19, people who fall for information about the virus could be in real danger and may die, like maybe the virus is fake or maybe some, kept some new chemical compound is the cure, although we all know it's not. Identity theft. According to Security Magazine, there's an attack every 39 seconds on average on the web. An attack is where someone tries to put a virus on your computer or your, or your in laptop, your phone, your iPad, and they try to steal your information. Mostly they will try to steal your social security number because if someone steals your social security number, they can do whatever they want and essentially become you, except all the blame is on you. They can do whatever they want in your name. Mostly, they'll be stealing money in your name. They can also pro proclaim you dead virtually, so you can't do anything in the real life because you are virtually dead on all the databases. Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying or cyberstalking is where someone on the internet makes someone else afraid or concerned about their safety on the all on the internet. Most of the time, there isn't even any danger, but it seems like a big danger as a cyberbully tries tries to tries to make it like that. According to the Pew Research Center, Research Center, more than 59% of U.S. teenagers have experienced bullying or harassment online. Anyone can th this high rate might be influenced by by the fact that anyone with a mobile device or a laptop or computer can go to attack anyone on their internet and that person may even be a close friend or close internet friend if done correctly it can cause depression anxiety and even suicidal thoughts in the victim in conclusion social media should be regulated by governments because of disinformation identity theft and cyberbullying Thank you. Thank you so much. These kids worked so hard this week. We had, and I keep talking about all the hard work, but we had such a good time. You can learn and have a good time at the same time. And I think this week kind of proved that for us. Um, we absolutely adore these children. We're going to miss them. Uh, hopefully, I get to work with some of them next week in uh, 201. And thank you so much for the opportunity to work with these kids and to help them uh, achieve and, and to become better speakers. Nicole, did you want to say anything else? I completely agree. And I really uh, am looking forward to, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm coming back next week, but with uh, seeing those debates next week from those returning and hopefully they come back if not next week some other time because they're doing really really well and and we had a lot of fun so thanks guys all right well everybody have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy whatever might be left of your summer <laughs> uh, 
and, and have the best of luck with school this fall. Thank you so much. Thank you.